Hey guys, it's Tim for MVP Machine. Um, in this video, we're going to be doing a comparison of a Suburban Tool 7-inch fly cutter, basically a 7.5-inch bar, and a Sumitomo face mill. And <clears throat> basically one uses the fly cutter, uses the TNMG 432 insert, which has six tips, costs approximately in this version uncoated costs about seven dollars a piece for the entire insert and the face mill Sumitomo uses a two-tip insert and these inserts cost about fourteen dollars a piece um, face mill has five inserts the fly cutter has one insert and I'm going to show you uh, some examples of how I use each of them and which one is more economical to use and uh, in some cases you might be surprised uh, which one works better as well so let's show you some examples okay in our first example we're going to start off with the fly cutter and we're going to cut um, 15 thousandths basically debark this 7 inch long by 4 and 3 quarter inch hot bulb plate and it's uh, made out of 1045 hot rolled steel which is kind of crunchy and the fly cutter is going to start off cutting one side then we'll go face mill on the other side and it's pretty common practice that if you get in the hot roll plate you have to clean it up so see which one works better and we'll get the time and uh, we'll probably run an indicator over it just to show you how the finish is afterwards and how flat it is so here we go we're going to start first with the fly cutter Okay, our cycle time was 1 minute and 16 seconds. I made a slight miscalculation where I plunged into the part, as you can see. <clears throat> a little bit onto the part, but that finish looks really nice. We'll throw an indicator in there and uh, see what we got. Okay, we're <clears throat> going to check it for uh, basically flatness um, and the indicator down. This is a one thou indicator. And over seven inches it looks perfectly flat. Except for the bump that I left there from plunging into the part. So now we're gonna go to the base mill. Okay, now we've got the same plate flipped over and we're going to try it with the uh, 3 inch face mill. It's going to be running at 580 RPMs and 12 inches a minute. Here we go.
and their time on that one is two minutes uh, even. Right at two minutes zero seconds, so we got a little more time having to do the two cuts. But really, the story is the finish. Um, and I could have uh, fed that tool a little faster. You can tell when you see a chip like that that's kind of wide open. Ideally, that should have been a should look like a little six. That would be the perfect chip out of that. But we we're only taking fifteen thousand there, so. And a lot of people will use this tool for, for fine finishing, and which in many cases some people find that finish acceptable. But let's see what the indicator says about it. Okay, here we have the same indicator, one cow. We're going to check the perimeter of this and see. It's probably going to be fairly flat, but I know there's a bump in the middle. It's hard to get that blend line right. Right there, you see it jump. And we're going to see it coming back over. So, not perfectly flat. And uh, let me pull this out of here and I'll show you both sides up close. Okay, there's the fly cut side up close. And let me flip it over. Base no cut up close. And I know there's people that are going to say I can get a better finish than this on a face mill. And you can. This is 1045 hot rollers. It's a little country. So, like, you always have your blend line, which is always going to be there um, on, a <clears throat> on a face mill. So, be, unless you have a <clears throat> face mill large enough to cover that whole surface. So, let's go on to another example uh, between the two. Okay, here we have another example. Um, <clears throat> we've got uh, a hypothetical job here. It's going to be 100 parts, and I've set up two in the vise. Um, we need to basically do a six-side square on all of these, and the way I have it set up, I've got a uh, stop over here on the left-hand side. That's set up so that basically you put your parts in, put a temporary one, two, three block in on the left, and the space out the parts in the middle. I'm just using a quarter inch parallel. And the reason I have them set a little bit off the end of the vise is since we're doing a six side square, <coughs> we can cut each side off the end of the vise on one of the blocks, and then in the, one of the other squaring operations when it gets to the to the bottom side will be the other side so that we'll be able to accomplish all of the squaring in four setups so um, I'm just going to show you fly cutter versus face mill again and we're going to run the fly cutter first um, it's running 800 I'm sorry 750 rpms at 10 inches a minute and we'll get a time on that and then we'll do the best possible time we can do on the face mill and see which one wins Here we go. Again, it's a 15 valve pop for basically the square operation. Okay, we've got 29 seconds and... Okay, now we've got the face mill set up. We're going to do the same cut, but this one has to go a long ways because each chunk is 3 inch and our cutter is 3 inch. Um, we would most likely, usually a 3 inch cutter cuts just under, would most likely leave a line on the top, so we're going to go the long way. This is going to be running at 625 RPMs and 15 inches a minute.
Okay, and we've got a cycle time of 50 seconds exactly, and we've got a similar finish to what we had on the plate. Um, this is cold rolled steel, these little blocks, and I neglected to mention that we started out the day with brand new inserts in both of these, so. Okay, I brought the parts that we just made out, or finished, um, out to better light so you guys could see the finishes a little better. Here we have the face mill part side of the plate and it's kind of rough. Other side, fly cut side, has my fingerprints but it's a much nicer finish. I did wind up uh, going in there and finishing that little step before I flipped the, the plate over uh, off camera just because I wanted to sit square on the on the parallels. And then uh, face mill side of these little blocks Kind of rough fly cut side. Again, just a much nicer finish, and customers tend to prefer that. Um, I don't really mean to say one of these cutters is better than the other because you kind of need both. Uh, base mill is made um, to take much deeper cuts than that, um, usually between 50 thousandths and 100 thousandths of an inch. And here we only took 15 thou. Fly cutter can go up to 25 thou depths of cut in mild steel, but usually between 15 and 20 gives you the best insert life. And a single tip, um, which on this insert, the insert costs seven dollars, and there's six points on each, so a single tip is about a dollar ten or so, um, and will last a hundred or so of these plates. Single tip on this is seven dollars a piece, and there's two of them, and uh, so you have a fourteen dollar insert. And when you wear those out, you've got to buy new ones, and it's painful. And they tend to wear out a lot easier when you take light depths of cut. So fine finishing is really not what the face mill, in this case, was made for. This one was, and you can take out that's a five insert cutter. So you can take out all the inserts but one and use it like a fly cutter, but it still doesn't give you the, the range you would need to cover this plate, so you'd still have your blend line. And there's some cases where I've used on production jobs the fly cutters to do roughing, and you can go over a small part like this ten times and take lighter cuts. Um, and wind up with a more economical, slightly slower job, but more economical because you're not replacing the insert so often, and you don't have to come back in for a finishing with a finishing tool to get this nice, nice finish. So, and typically when I use a face null on a larger part like this side of this plate, I would leave seven thou and then come back in here and finish with the fly cutter. So. Please be sure to leave your comments below. Um, the <coughs> fly cutter is available from subtool.com and on eBay. And the face mill is available at any manufacturing milling cutter supplier. Um, it's a Sumitomo. So thank you for watching. And if you like this video, be sure to like and subscribe.